What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're just continuing more and more with this engine build. What I'm gonna be doing in this one is installing the turbos. So this thing is not gonna be an NA anymore, which is freaking exciting. It's gonna be a turbocharged 300ZX engine and I can't wait for it. So today I'm getting the turbos on here. If you guys have a look, you can see that I painted my timing covers and everything off camera and the pipes up here. The only thing I didn't do was paint down here. It's not going to be visible anyways. I didn't want to waste time on stuff that's not really necessary. So that's left as is, but I painted the top real nice and the valve covers and everything. So that's that. Uh, I also rebuilt my power steering pump. I made a video about it. I don't know if I'll post it or not, but we'll see how that goes. Anyways, I'm going to be getting the turbos on. So I did a couple things off camera. I'll show you guys what I did. I already got started on this. Pretty much all I did was I took off the uh, headers. I took off the headers off both sides and I cleaned off the gasket that was uh, here with a razor blade. I cleaned it all off. One thing you do have to do to fit the turbo manifolds on this engine is you have to remove both of these studs on the um, driver side. And they were basically over here before. And then I, uh, I took them out and I put them this way because the new manifold lines up this way. So you have to move these two studs. They were fine on the passenger side. I didn't have to move anything. Yeah, this side was fine. It was just a driver side, pretty weird design. I don't know why it's like that, but whatever. That's all good. I, as you can see, I also put my new motor mounts in. These are torqued down already and not going anywhere. So these are my new motor mounts from Z1 Motorsports. The old ones were super crusty and I'm not gonna put destroyed parts back on this car when I got it all apart, so that's motor mounts are on i have new gaskets that are going to go on and then the twin turbo manifolds so i have to do a couple things before i get those manifolds on because i have the space to do it right now i have a twin turbo oil tree so i'm going to be taking off the na oil tree and putting on the twin turbo one so i can run an oil cooler if you want to use your na oil tree that's completely fine as well you can just get a sandwich plate or something but but i bought a twin turbo oil tree off a guy who was pretty close by here so i'm gonna install that before i do anything and then i'm also going to uh change my oil pressure sensor because uh i have a new one so and this one did work but it was not always working if that makes sense so i'm definitely going to change that out at the same time So after I got that NA oil tree off, I'm just in the process of putting on the new one. There's a gasket that goes in between, so I, I had the gasket for it ahead of time. So I just put the gasket in there, I cleaned off the old one at the mating surface as much as I could, and then I put the gasket in there, and now I'm just going to tighten these up and then torque them to spec. I didn't take out this bolt yet, this is where the old pressure sensor is going to go. The previous owner had the bolt in there. Maybe they ran an aftermarket sensor or something. I'm not sure, but this bolt is in there pretty good. So once I have this mounted, I can take this off easier. So that's why I haven't removed that yet. And then I'll put in the new oil pressure sensor and go from there. But yeah, coming along nice. One thing I forgot to mention is there's not just a gasket. There's actually an O-ring inside as well. I changed that out as well. So I changed both the gasket and the O-ring. I forgot to mention that. Now I'm just in the process of heat wrapping my exhaust manifolds. It's my first time doing something like this, but I tried to do it the best I could. Couldn't really find a way to do this side, but it's all good. I think that should, uh, should get it done for me. I did the other one as well, and I mocked it up to the engine already just to make sure everything goes good. But I'm going to show you guys this whole side of the engine as I'm doing it. I'm just getting ready to bolt this on. And then from there, it's time to do the turbos. Okay, so both of the exhaust manifolds are on. They're just snug down right now. They get torqued to 20 to 23 foot pounds of torque. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And then we can get to the fun stuff. It is finally time to put these things in. My car is never going to be the same, boys, and I cannot wait. Look at these freshly rebuilt turbos. 
So if you watched my parts video that I made a few months ago where I showed every single part that I'm putting on my car this winter, you saw these turbos as well. These are OEM turbos and I gave my reasoning in that video so I'm not gonna go in depth of why I, I wanted to keep the turbos OEM. I bought these used very cheap, like I pretty much got these for free and then I had them rebuilt. And, uh, they changed the, uh, the center housing so this is a completely new turbo pretty much. They painted it, they do everything. And uh, here I have my, uh, my coolant lines. Um, I got these from eBay. They're gonna work just fine for, uh, for this. So these are all the coolant lines. And then this is the uh, gasket and oil line kit. I got this from Concept Z. So it has all the gaskets you need here for the dam pipes and, uh, and everything's in here. These are the oil lines and the fittings that you need and the gasket. So everything is right here. I can't wait. Okay, so I have the turbos pretty much mocked up right now. It's a lot of trial and error for me. Like you guys know, I've never done something like this before. So nothing is actually completely tight. Some things are that I know I'm not gonna be moving, but not everything is tight. So I'm still kind of playing around with it, but I just wanted to show you guys kind of what I'm doing. So these are the coolant lines that I, uh, that I ran. I think this is how I might keep them. I'm not 100% sure, but then they're just gonna get the rubber or silicone coolant hoses, whichever ones I decide to go with, most likely silicone. And then they'll run to the heater pipes at the back. Then I have the oil drain that's ready. And I also have the oil feed. You can see it's going in from there around the back. And this is where it goes into in the block so this is behind the ac compressor bracket on an na motor it has the drain plug in there right now i realized i was missing the uh, banjo bolt that's supposed to be there so i ordered it i should have that in a couple days i'll add that on at the very end but this is all ready to go so once that banjo bolt is here i'll just put this in put that banjo bolt on with the crush washers then the ac compressor bracket can go right on there so these oil drain lines i have the little silicone attachment for them as well I didn't put that on yet because I still have to do my oil pan. If any of you are wondering why I didn't do my oil pan first, it's because I also have to do my rear main. So I'm pretty much gonna do that all in one day at the very end before I drop the motor in. I'm gonna flip this engine over. I'm gonna do my oil pan because I have to do the seals as well at the front and the back. So I kind of want to do that all in one go. So I'm gonna flip this upside down. I'm gonna do my oil pan that day, do my rear main and clutch flywheel everything i'll make a separate video about that so and i still have room it looks like all around to get that oil pan off so it's not going to be an issue or i hope it's not an issue but the oil pan will go on at the very end and then i'll attach this the drain line to the oil pan i also realized i'm missing the missing the turbo inlet pipes so i ordered those with the banjo bolt so i'll have those all tomorrow i'll put that on at the very end this is loose right now, it's not actually on there. I only, uh, I'll tighten that down once I know everything's done properly, but the gasket and everything is in there. I have gaskets everywhere where they should be. And yeah, so I think it's looking okay so far. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure if I'm keeping these lines the way they are, or if I'm gonna maybe route it upwards or, I did it this way so I have some room to kind of bend it where it needs to. If I do it the other way, it kind of gets way too long. So I left them like this, I'll probably leave it like that. I'll show you guys the other side as well. I have the small coolant line over here. I don't know if I should have used a long one here and the smaller one somewhere else, not sure. We'll see how that goes. But the only thing I don't like is this oil feed line. It's still loose, it's not in there. I think I am gonna change it or try routing it a different way. It was kind of hard for me to do it without turning this more. And I don't want to over tighten this and then strip the, 
the hole in the block. So I'm trying to avoid that. When it sits like this is when it's perfectly tight. So I don't know, I'll figure something out because this should not be touching. It's not really touching, but I don't want it to touch and just be right beside the hot side of the turbo. That's probably asking for trouble. This oil return line is in as well, not tight. We'll do that afterwards again. The rest of it looks pretty good. So this is the other hole in the block on the NA motor that you use to tap into the oil feed for a turbo. But it's coming along, boys. The NA motor's got turbos on it. Anyways, just give you guys a quick update. I know a lot of videos aren't getting posted right now. It's I'm just trying to finish this thing. So uh, thank you for your patience and uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.